ASMR leadership, where I read books to you, and mouth sounds are cool, and it's supposed to be kind of relaxing and stuff. As of today, I've reached the two-month mark in coronavirus quarantine. I'm going a little mad, a little crazy, climbing the walls, not sure what to do with myself. I've already given myself one terrible quarantine haircut. Kind of looking like I need to do it again. My quarantine beard is patchy and gray and sad. But I do have scotch. Plenty of scotch. This is a great bottle. Oban 14 year from the West Highland region of Scotland. So I'm gonna drink. And I'm gonna read a book. I'm gonna thank you for joining me. Josephine's battling effort that 
Josephine's batting average at 19 was better than mine had been, and that, I'm sorry to confess, isn't paying Josephine much of a compliment. So, after that, <clears throat> when I wanted to call Josephine's attention to a mistake, I used to begin by saying, You have made a mistake, Josephine, but the Lord knows it's no worse than many I have made. You were not born with judgment. That comes only with experience. And you are better than I was at your age. I have been guilty of so many stupid, silly things myself. I have very little inclination to criticize you or anyone. But you don't think it would have been... But don't you think... Excuse me. But don't you think it would have been wiser if you had done so-and-so? It isn't nearly so difficult to listen to a recital of your faults if the person criticizing it begins by humbly admitting that he, too, is far from impeccable. Impeccable. Left turn. E.G. Dillistone, an engineer in Brandon, Manitoba, Canada. Manitoba. Manitoba was having problems with his new secretary. Letters he dictated were coming to his desk for signature with two or three spelling mistakes per page. Mr. Dillastone reported how he handled this. Like many engineers, I have not I have not been noted for my excellent English or spelling. For years I have kept a little black thumb index book for words I had trouble spelling. When it became apparent that merely pointing out the errors was not going to cause my secretary to do more proofreading and dictionary work, I resolved to take another approach. When the next letter came to my attention, when the next letter came to my attention that had errors in it, I sat down with the typist and said, typist, we don't refer to anyone as typists anymore, do we? I sat down with the typist and said, Somehow this word doesn't look right. It's one of the words I have always had trouble with. That's the reason I started this spelling book of mine. I opened the book to the appropriate page. Yes, here it is. I'm very conscious of my spelling now because people do judge us by our letters and misspellings. And misspellings make us look less professional. I don't know whether she copied my system or not, but since that conversation, her frequency of spelling errors has been significantly reduced. Well done, E.G. Dillastone. The polished Prince Bernard von Bülow learned the sharp necessity of doing this back in 1909. Von Bülow was then the Imperial Chancellor of Germany, and on the throne said William the Wilhelm the second Wilhelm the haughty Wilhelm the arrogant Wilhelm the last of the German Kaisers building an army and navy that he boasted could whip their weight in wildcats what the hell does that mean Africa, and so on and on. 
Does this remind you of any particular boastful U.S. pseudo-businessman turned politician? But I digress. No other such amazing words had ever fallen from the lips of a European king in peacetime within a hundred years. The entire continent buzzed with the fury of a hornet's nest. England was incensed. German statesmen were aghast. If only our own statesmen would be aghast. All right. Sticking to the text. And in the midst of all this consternation, the Kaiser became panicky and suggested to Prince von Bülow, the imperial chancellor, that he take the blame. Really? Somebody else needs to take the blame for what this guy said? He's not taking responsibility for anything. I'm sitting here in the middle of a pandemic, for God's sake. Take no... Take no responsibility for anything. Yes, he wanted Von Bülow to announce that it was all his responsibility, that he had advised his monarch to say these incredible things. But your majesty, Von Bülow protested, it seems to me utterly impossible that anybody, either in Germany or England, could suppose me capable of having advised your majesty to say any such thing. The moment those words were out of Von Bülow's mouth, he realized he had made a grave mistake. The Kaiser blew up. You consider me a donkey, he shouted capable of blunders you yourself could never have committed. Von Bülow knew he ought to have, <clears throat> he ought to have praised before he condemned, but since that was too late, he did the next best thing. He praised after he had criticized, and it worked a miracle. I'm far from suggesting that, he answered respectfully. Your majesty surpasses me in many respects, not only, of course, in naval and military knowledge, but above all, in natural science. I have often listened in admiration when your majesty explained the barometer, or wireless telegraphy, or the Rowingen rays. I don't know what that is. I am shamefully ignorant of all branches of natural science, have no notion of chemistry or physics, and am quite incapable of explaining the simplest of natural phenomena. But, Von Bülow continued, in compensation, I possess historical knowledge and perhaps certain qualities useful in politics, especially in diplomacy. The Kaiser beamed. Von Bülow had praised him. Von Bülow had exalted him and humbled himself. The Kaiser could forgive anything after that. Haven't I always told you, he exclaimed with enthusiasm, that we complete one another famously? We should stick together, and we will. Kaiser von Pence, maybe, I don't know, maybe. He shook hands with von Bülow, not once, but several times, and later in the day he waxed so enthusiastic that he exclaimed with double fists, if anyone says anything to me against Prince von Bülow, I shall punch him in the nose. History repeats itself. Von Bülow saved himself in time, but canny diplomacy that he, canny diplomat that he was, <clears throat> he nevertheless had made one error. He should have begun by talking about his own shortcomings and Wilhelm's superiority. 
not by intimating that the Kaiser was a half-wit in need of a guardian. If a few sentences humbling oneself and praising the other party can turn a haughty, insulted Kaiser into a staunch friend, imagine what humility and praise can do for you and me in our daily contacts. Even if we're not in daily contact with the President of the United States. Rightfully used, they will work veritable miracles in human relations. Admitting one's own mistakes, even when one hasn't corrected them, can help convince somebody to change his behavior. This was illustrated more recently by Clarence Zurhausen of Timonium, Maryland, when he discovered his 15-year-old son was experimenting with cigarettes. So this is the second time in a couple of chapters where I think Dale Carnegie is making up the name of a city. Is Timonium, Maryland a real place? Sorry, people of Timonium, if it is. Clarence is quoted. Naturally, I didn't want David to smoke, Mr. Zurhausen told us. But his mother and I smoked cigarettes. We were giving him a bad example all the time. I explained to Dave how I started smoking at about his age, and how the nicotine had gotten the best of me, and now it was nearly impossible for me to stop. I reminded him of how irritating my cough was, and how he and how he had been after me to give up cigarettes not many years before. I didn't exhort him to stop or make threats or warn him about their dangers. All I did was point out how I was hooked on cigarettes and what it had meant to me. He thought about it for a while and decided he wouldn't smoke until he had graduated from high school. As the years went by, David never did start smoking, and has no intention of ever doing so. As a result of that conversation, I made the decision to stop smoking cigarettes myself, and with the support of my family, I have succeeded. Way to go, Clarence Zurhausen of the fictitious land of Timonium, Maryland. A good leader follows this principle. Chapter 24, Principle Lesson. Talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. Talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. accept it. I believe it. I'm still thirsty. So that does it for chapter 24 of